ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Tonight, it's a rematch of last season's dramatic pennant race as the National League champion Atlanta Braves meet the Los Angeles Dodgers. It was a pennant race that provided great baseball drama. Tension to the final weekend. There were unforgettable thrills. And perhaps most unforgettable of all, 21-year-old Steve Avery suddenly emerged as one of baseball's best pitchers. He dominated the Dodgers down the stretch and then really made his mark against Pittsburgh in the playoffs. Tonight, he looks to continue his success against the Dodgers and their mercurial slugger, Daryl Strawberry. And now he's been joined by boyhood friend Eric Davis. But recent injuries to Davis have once again raised questions about his ability to produce for the Dodgers. The Braves, meanwhile, have, unexpectedly, one of the league's leading hitters, Deion Sanders, the football hero, now thriving at hardball. Sanders has hit safely in all 12 games and has already let down six triples, more than any other team's total. Sanders and the Braves meet the Dodgers next. Fabulous holiday Sunday in Southern California from Dodger Stadium. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball featuring the National League champion Braves and the Los Angeles Dodgers. The standings are just the, the opposite of where they were at the end of last year when the Braves finished number one and the Dodgers finished number two, but it is early yet. Hello, everyone. I'm John Miller along with Joe Morgan here again on Easter Sunday as we are every year with ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Joe, on Easter, you're my only family. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Same here. Happy Easter and a happy Passover to all of you out there. And we hope that you have had a great day with the family today here in Southern California. Gorgeous. Now we've got the Dodgers and Braves. And of course, the Braves last year, what a story from worst to first. And so many of those names became household words, uh, words around the baseball world. Guys like uh, Rich, uh, David Justice and uh, Terry Pendleton. But right now they're being led by a guy who didn't do that much last year, Deion Sanders. Well, what Deion is doing now, John, he's leading them with excitement. And he's also the leadoff hitter they have been missing since Otis Nixon went down. This is the speed that Deion Sanders possesses, although last night he was out trying to score on a very shallow fly ball to center field. But he has done everything else correctly so far this season. He is leading the league in triples. He's at the top in batting average, and he's also showing a little power. All right. Now, last year for the Braves, although Justice uh, was out for a long period of time, the Braves won anyway, and Terry Pendleton won that MVP award for them. Well, I think Terry Pendleton won the MVP for the intangibles of the game, leadership, playing good defense, little things that you don't notice in the box score every day. But the real productive leader on this ball club is Ron Gant. Ron Gant has stolen over 30 bases, hit over 30 home runs the last couple of years. He has a chance, if he can do it three in a row, he will be the first player in the history of major leagues to do it three times in a row. And he's off to his best start ever here in the month of April. Now for the Dodgers, Daryl Strawberry. You think of Strawberry when you think of the Dodgers, the big slugger, and he really got it going here Friday after starting with a slump. He hit a three-run homer earlier against Glavin, and this is a home run against Pena in the ninth inning that broke a 5-5 tie and made the Dodgers a winner. Two homers and five RBIs for the straw man in that ball game Friday. And uh, when Darrell gets hot, the Dodgers seem to get hot. Well, I think he is the guy that they have to count on for the long ball. It's interesting. He got off to a slow start last year. He's off to a slow start again this year. He got really hot the second half last year and almost led them to the pennant. This year he has a little help. Eric Davis is here. But Eric Davis throughout his career has been injured, and again he is injured. This year he's going to have to play a lot of games if the Dodgers are going to get a lot of production out of Strawberry because eventually they're going to stop pitching to him if Davis doesn't hit. All right, so Davis is in there tonight with Strawberry. We've got the Braves and the Dodgers. Steve Avery, one of the heroes of the National League Championship Series, will be looking for his first win tonight for Atlanta, and he'll be opposed by the high-priced free agent, already 2-0, Tom Candiotti for the Dodgers. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball is brought to you by Jeep and Eagle, a division of Chrysler Corporation, proud sponsor of the 1992 U.S. Olympic team. 
By Delta Airlines, we love to fly, and it shows. By the new Lufkin 2000, the power tape that works the way your hand does. And by Napa, because there are no unimportant parts. There's the panoramic view of Dodger Stadium. John Miller and Joe Morgan back with Sunday Night Baseball. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the National League champion Atlanta Braves. Deion Sanders leading the league in hitting in center field. Jeff Blauser second base. MVP Terry Pendleton at third base. Ron Gant, the 30-30 man, bats cleanup in left field. Sid Bream, the former Dodger at first base. Damon Berryhill, the former Cub, is the catcher batting sixth. Steve Lyons is in right field, psycho. Rafael Belliard is the shortstop inning eight. And Steve Avery, one of the heroes of the baseball world last October, is on the mound. And pitching for the Dodgers, there's Tom Candiotti, longtime American leaguer, knuckleballer, off to a fine start with his new team in his new league. Well, he's done a great job because I think the pitch hitters are not familiar with Tom Candiotti and how much his knuckleball breaks. So it's going to take them a little while before they can adjust to him. But Candiotti is a proven winner, and I think he'll do a good job for the Dodgers over the course of the season. Well, let's see how well he does with the hottest hitter in the league, Neon, Deion Sanders. <laughs> and uh, Deion, who really had uh, truly been a part-time baseball player in the past, has become focused on the game. And look at that batting average, 440. Start of the day, he was second in the league to hitting to John Cruck, but Cruck went 0 for 3. So Sanders, right at the moment, does lead the National League in hitting. Also in triples. And it is a called strike on one. Kind of interesting. They start him off with another slow pitch tonight. Normally, you start the leadoff hitter off with a fastball. Oral Hershiser did the same thing last night. First pitch of the game with a changeup. There's another knuckleball. And it's two strikes to Sanders. Sanders has hit more triples all by himself, six of them, including one last night than any other entire team has hit in the major leagues. And that's a ball outside, one or two. So we'll keep an eye on Sanders because uh, he's thinking seriously of the possibility of becoming a full-time baseball player. Well, you better think about trying to hit this knuckleball because he's probably not seen one as good as Candiotti, and there he goes down. Because one of the things to remember, you don't see a lot of knuckleballs in the minor leagues not good ones in the National League they did not have a knuckleball pitcher last year so this may be his first look at a knuckleball pitcher and get in uh, major league action here's Tom Candiotti's knuckleball you can see the bottom just falls out of that one and no chance you can see there the knuckleball has no spin on it you see it just dies right down dies right to the ground this is Blouser Candiotti moving pretty well for an old guy and just like that, two men are gone. Tom uh, Candiotti has been with Cleveland most of his career. This, John, this is a wasted at bat. Watch Blouser. He just kind of gives up. I mean, that's if you're going, your first pitch, you take it if you can't get a good swing at it. But don't just give up. That's like, that's what a knuckleball pitcher will do to you. He makes you defensive at the plate and not aggressive. You still have to be an aggressive hitter if you're going to hit the knuckleball. Here is Terry Pendleton, most valuable player in the National League last year. He had his best year ever. A big reason why the Braves had uh, that big turnaround. Helped stabilize the infield. Showing bunt and taking a called strike, says Jerry Lane. And it is 0 on 1. Now, Pendleton is hurting right now. His right knee is giving him trouble. He kind of wrenched it, swinging at a tough curveball against Cincinnati the other day, thrown by Chris Hammond. So it's giving him a little trouble, but he did tell his manager, Bobby Cox, tonight that it is feeling better than it has been. Two down, nobody on. The 34-year-old Tom Candiotti delivers a pop-up. Carros, and that is the inning. Candiotti makes short work of the National League champions. Dodgers coming up when we return. John Miller and Joe Morgan from Dodger Stadium. You see the beautiful blue skies overhead in this twilight ball game. Starting lineup now for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Brett Butler leads off in center field. Mike Sharperson is over at third base. Rookie first baseman Eric Karros starts at first base. Darryl Strawberry, two homers, five battered in Friday in right field. Eric Davis back in the lineup. He's hurting with a herniated disc in his neck. Juan Samuel at second base. Mike Sosha, the veteran catcher, tagged out two men at the plate last night. Jose Offerman is the shortstop, and Tom Candiotti is on the mound. And for Atlanta, now he's a 
He's a grizzled old veteran, 22-year-old Steve Avery, looking for that first win after winning 18 last year, but winning the hearts of uh, baseball fans everywhere in the postseason a year ago. Well, the most impressive thing to me about Steve Avery is his knowledge of how to pitch and how to set hitters up. There are a lot of young pitchers who have good stuff, but they do not possess the knowledge of how to set hitters up, how to use one pitch to set up another. Steve Avery understands that very well, and that's why he was so successful last year, especially in the playoffs when you have a good scouting report and you face the same team over and over. Now, Brett Butler is one of the best butters around. So, in fact, you see Pendleton over third base very shallow. Butler with that 292 average and, as always, a very high on base percentage. He'll take a walk. He works the count. Beats out a lot of bunts. Slaps the ball past those infielders when they move in like that. And the breaking ball is in the dirt. One ball, one strike. Butler, although a left-handed hitter facing one of the better left-handers around, is uh, six for 14 against Avery. Well, Brett Butler is a hitter that kind of slaps the ball around, has a short swing. So a guy like Avery is not going to bother him nearly as much as Avery bothers some other left-handers because he doesn't have a pitch to set him up with. And Butler will bunt. Here's the Atlanta defense. You have Lyons in right, Sanders in centers, Ron Gant in left, Pendleton, Belliard, Blouser, Bream, and Damon Berryhill is catching tonight along with Steve Avery on the mound. One ball and two strikes. Little bloop. Sanders has it. He was playing very shallow in the first place. And Butler is retired, one away. And that will bring up Mike Sharperson. Now, this young left-hander, Steve Avery, has never lost to the Dodgers. That's why uh, his manager, Bobby Cox, was uh, very confident with Avery on the mound tonight. Uh, of his first two starts, neither of which he has won, he faced the Giants. They knocked him out early. And the other start was against Cincinnati. And Cox says he's never done well against Cincinnati. They always seem to give him trouble. 18 and 8 last year was Avery. But it was really, as we said, in that postseason that he got it going. He pitched two games against Eastern Division champion Pittsburgh and never allowed a run. There's a strike. Uh, maybe you heard of Jerry Lane. <laughs> That's what he was saying. It's just a strike. That's a ball. One ball, one strike. Avery pitched 16 in the third innings in the league championship series. No runs and only nine hits to the Pirates. And those guys can hit. Yes. Pirates are an interesting ball club. I mean, they're doing very well off the best start they've had in about 20 years. Pendleton. Deal with that hot smash. Bream and Sharperson is the second out. Pendleton was a little lucky on that because he really came up a little too quick. Let's take a look at Pendleton. Now watch, he kind of comes up a little too quick right there. You see, he's on his way up. The ball stays down a little bit. He's in trouble, but... You only have time to react when the balls hit that sharply down the third baseline. I asked him about this infield, and he says it seems to get progressively worse with each game. <laughs> this is the fourth game of the series. There's a foul that will go out of play off the bat of Carroll's. Well, that's that's unusual for someone from Atlanta to say that the infield is poor, because Atlanta has the toughest infield I've ever seen in the major leagues. Well, he likes that one better currently than he than this one. You know, maybe he's done a little work on his own. You know, a lot of times if you have a field, you make them, you have your grounds crew either make it harder in front of you or softer, whichever you prefer. So sometimes your home field, you can, you know, kind of personalize it. Oh, and two the count to Karos, and now one and two. Karos, uh, highly recommended out of the Dodgers minor league system, and yet playing right now with uh, Cal Daniels being uh, penciled in as the first baseman during the spring. They've also got the veteran Todd Benzinger. So they haven't really started the year by giving him much of a vote of confidence. The pitch is low. Two and two. He did hit a home run about nine days ago in San Diego. His first major league home run. And his brother ran into the left field seats to retrieve the ball for him. That's a foul back to the screen. And the guy who caught the home run would not give him the ball. <laughs> he says, hey, it's my brother. He just hit a home run. Finally, the guy says, well, you have to get me an autograph of your brother, this fellow, Eric Karos and Daryl Strawberry. <laughs> well, then Eric found this out during the game. says, how can I ask Strawberry for his autograph during the game? I'm his teammate. Three and two the count. Well, they finally got it done. Mike Sharperson went to Strawberry and asked him for the autograph. 
Karras is a guy that they need to supply some power from the right side. Popped him up. Shallow right field. Dampling the sun out there is Steve Lyons. It's one of those, Joe, what they call a sun-blown pop-up. <laughs> After one, no score from Dodger Stadium. We'll be back. Hey, Eric and Daryl, where can I see you buddies belting curves? In your face. So, Dan Marino, where's a dolphin land after the offseason? In your face. Greg Norman, where's a great white shark? In your face. ESPN, your face. Sports fans turn to ESPN first, because great sports are always in your face. In your face. In your face, mate. ESPN, ESPN, your face. Here we go to the top of the second inning from Dodger Stadium. The Atlanta Braves come to bat with cleanup hitter Ron Gant. And the knuckler from Candiotti is in there for a strike. It is 0-1. Gant hitting 3-0-2 already, which is unusual. He is notorious for terrible Aprils. Three home runs and 11 RBIs, so the Braves take that as a very good sign. That knuckler drops low and off the glove of Mike Sosha, who has been given a lot of credit by Tom Candiotti for doing just fine. Well, he's done great because I watched the game we did in spring training. He never missed one ball, which is amazing. This one goes off his glove, but normally, I mean, he has been able to catch everything that Candiotti's been able to throw. Now, sometimes, and it's difficult to pick up even with that great shot from center field, Candiotti has a big, big overhand curveball that goes just as slowly as that knuckleball. It's also a little difficult to see because the shadows that you can see are over home plate and not in the outfield. And that's a base hit for Ron Gant. And Gant, besides being a guy who's hit 32 home runs in each of the last two years, he can also do a lot of things with a single. He's got a lot of speed. Uh, take a look at this knuckleball. You can see the shadows, and it makes it a little difficult if you're the hitter, that knuckleball didn't do very much. Just kind of moved like a slider right into the middle of the plate. This is a tough time to see here at Dodger Stadium. Five o'clock, sun is still out in the outfield, and you've got the shadows from the stands covering home plate and partially covering the ground between the pitcher's mound. And you can see the hitter's background out there. That tarp out there is kind of shiny. Hitters don't like playing twilight games in this ballpark. This will be interesting, John, to see how Ron Gant reacts because Candiotti throws the knuckleball. He will continue to throw it with runners on base. And the knuckleball is probably the easiest pitch in the world next to the slow, slow curve to steal a base off of because the catcher can't be sure of what it's going to do. He kind of has to wait behind the plate. He can't come out charging towards second base. Well, a lot of people were predicting that Candiotti would have problems in this league because of the abundance of base stealing and uh, Gant stole 34 last year and 33 the year before so he is a base deal there he goes and so she drops the ball anyway yeah that's what I'm talking about he has to wait for the ball and if he doesn't wait that's probably what will happen he will not be able to catch it or he will bobble it now watch Sosha. he sees that Gant is going he has a decent jump not a great jump but the knuckleball you see Sosha's is already coming out and also he has that big glove. And Sosha's not used to catching with a big glove. You know, you catch four times four games a week with a regular glove and two games a week with the big glove, and it makes it very difficult for you to handle it. And the count now is 3-0 to Sid Bream. Former Dodger off to a real slow start for Atlanta. You see that huge glove. Isn't it uh, some former Dodger catcher or executive kind of invented that huge no, glove? I'll tell you who invented it. That's uh, ball Paul, four. Paul Richards, former, you know, he was for Hart Wilhelm. He's the one that Back came up seven. with the idea. Paul Richards. Paul, Richard. Paul, Paul, they call him. Pat Corrales, the first base coach, pretty good catcher in his own right over there with Bream. And then you see that huge glove. What it is, it's a lot different from a normal catcher's glove because it's more like a first baseman's glove, which allows you to catch the ball with one hand. See the flexibility there catch the ball with one hand a lot easier with this glove than you could a regular catcher's glove. Here is Damon Berryhill. Former uh, Chicago Cup. Switch hitter batting left-handed. 
This is his first start catching any other pitcher but his uh, former Cub teammate and current Braves teammate, Mike Bilecki. That's a strike. But Bobby Cox said that Greg Olson, who also was one of the World Series and playoff heroes for Atlanta last October, just could use a night off. Gannett second. With Bream at first, the Braves with an opportunity here. And Barry, he'll try to move him up. Nobody out. Well, you can see that Candiotti and also Socia is not afraid to call for the knuckleball with a runner on second, which means to me that he'll call it with a runner on third as well. So uh, he's very confident in the fact that he can handle Candiotti's knuckleball. Jimmy Williams, one time manager of the Toronto Blue Jays, and also before that, third base coach of the Blue Jays, under manager Bobby Cox. And they're reunited here with the Atlanta Braves. Offerman bluffing in behind Gant at second. Candiotti taking a look now, the pitch. And it is one ball and two strikes to Damon Berryhill. Berryhill, 28 years of age, as Bobby Cox. Berryhill, at one time with the Cubs, they thought he was going to be their starting catcher for years and years, but he had injury problems. And then almost at the end of last season, he was traded to Atlanta with Bilecki. And it Still one ball and two strikes to Damon Berryhill. Nobody out. Steve Lyons is on deck. There are a lot of different theories on how to handle a knuckleball pitcher or how to hit one. Um, my favorite is if you move closer to the pitcher and closer to the plate. What that does, if you move closer to the pitcher, it gives the ball less time to dance. You're going to hit it a little bit more out in front, take some of the break out of it. He has moved up, looks like. Yes, he's moved up, but he's still off the plate. I think he should be a little closer to the plate. That's a base hit in the right field. Now here comes Gant with excellent speed. Strawberry's got a strong but erratic arm. He won't uh, go after Gant. It is one to nothing Atlanta with Bream stopping at second. Very Hill. Sounded like he broke his bat on that one. Well, that shows he's smarter than I am. See, if he'd have been a little closer to the plate, he'd have hit it solid. He might have carried all the way to the outfield. Right it was a little off the plate. He hit it off the end of the bat, and it's a base hit to right oh, field and a RBI. Well, oh, he planned that. Then. Oh, yeah, he planned that. <laughs> Hitters are smart, especially catchers. We'll take a look at it. See the knuckleball going away from him, and he reaches out and catches it, but he catches it on the end of the bat. We'll take another look at it. You see the, there's no spin on the ball. Now it rotates and goes away, but that one stayed up. And if the knuckleball stays up, it's kind of like a mediocre fastball if it doesn't move. Here is Steve Lyons, a new member of the Atlanta Braves. He was with the Red Sox last year. He's also been with the White Sox. Started with the Red Sox, too. Uh, he takes a strike. Now, he's in there playing right field tonight because he has had success against Candiotti. He's seen him in the American League. Hasn't hit real well against him, but around, uh, according to Bobby Cox, about 270 or so. That's good. I guess a knuckleball pitcher. You don't see them that, see them that often, so it's not easy to hit them. Two strikes to count. Still nobody out. You know, we're noticing here if the first pitch to Lions in was a slow curveball. They have had a couple of hits off of his knuckleball when it did not knuckle. But this is the difference between Candiotti and, say, Phil Necro. See, Candiotti is a pitcher who happens to throw a knuckleball. Phil Necro was a knuckleball pitcher, so that was the only pitch that he threw, or he threw it 90% of the time. Candiotti will go to another pitch if his knuckleball is not moving very well. Two strikes to count, two on, nobody out. Nice pick up there, second by Sharperson, and they get the double play. I said Sharperson, Sam Wells is the man. I beg your pardon. Who made the nice pick up on a ball that could have put a hole right through his midsection. Well, it was a very difficult play, but he stayed down on it. And he was able to turn the double play. It's just a line drive. That is a tough catch because it's an in-between hop and Offerman who has been you know the, the subject of a lot of negative stories here in the press has really done a good job turning a double play and he's actually playing pretty well he's hit the ball well but he's taken a lot of flack here and Sam Well the, the middle of their infield is not doing as well as they had hoped you know Sam Wells made a few errors last year here's Rafael Belliard the pitcher on deck and that's a strike in the outside one run is in for Atlanta it looked like they were going to make it a multiple run inning, but 
The nice stop on the ground ball by Samuel, starting the double play. And the Adi. This may get him out of it. And Sosha holds on to it, a base hit for Belliard, and holding it third, and very wisely, Sid Bream. Well, Sid Bream is not the fastest runner in the league, and you'll see this pitch, which is a knuckleball away. Belliard just makes contact. Sosha looked down to third immediately, and then he knows he does not have a shot at Belliard, so now he takes to make sure that Bream does not score. You see Candiotti heading for the plate. Yeah, Candiotti, of course, has to go to the plate. And now the pitcher, after the base hit by Belliard, Steve Avery will come to bat. And Avery is one for four with a triple and a run batted in this year. It's Carroll's in the bag at first with Belliard. And here's Avery. Let's see how he pitches Avery. Again, you have a runner at third and two down. Let's see if he figures he can get Avery out with something other than a knuckleball. Now there's a curveball. And this is probably how I would try to pitch to Avery in this situation. You don't want, last thing you want to do is have a wild pitch or a pass ball with the pitcher hitting. A different story when you're pitching to a hitter you have to go after him with your best stuff but you have to have confidence in yourself that you can get the pitcher out with something other than your knuckle one strike to count that will come back out of play it is 0 2 two down two on one in for Atlanta we're in the top of the second inning from Dodger Stadium it is one to nothing Atlanta over Los Angeles just getting started in the twilight here what happened to the big crowd at Dodger Stadium where is everybody? Must be only 40,000 people here so far to watch Tommy Lasorda and the Dodgers. If they can win this ball game, the Dodgers will have taken three out of four from the National League champion Braves. Two strikes to count. Into left field, Aaron Davis, plenty of room, and that's the inning. One run and two hits. Like three hits and two left. One nothing Atlanta. Miller Genuine Draft presents Streaks, Peaks, and Valleys. Going into the night, prime time. A hit in every game this year for the Braves. Steve Avery, 5-0 lifetime with an ERA of under one against the Dodgers. And the Valley, the current starting Dodgers lineup tonight, does not have a homer against Avery in his entire career. With that said, let's wing it back west. And here comes Daryl Strawberry to lead it off for the Dodgers, who trail by a run. Strawberry facing Steve Avery. One to nothing Atlanta. Fastball for a called strike. Strawberry has never done well against Avery, but then again, find a Dodger who has. <laughs> Nobody's done well on this ball club against Avery. Two strikes. Strawberry didn't seem to think so in that last one. Well, see, he has gone away twice with Strawberry. I remember the last time he pitched to him last year, he pitched him inside, so he's gone just the opposite. Foul ball. And he's throwing three straight breaking ball now. Three, three straight breaking balls to open this at bat. You see he's not done very well against Avery, but as you mentioned, not many Dodger players do hit Avery well. But he is at his best, I think, against big free swingers because he sets them up so well. See, now he comes back inside with a fastball. After three breaking balls away, he came inside with a fastball, and there was nothing, you know, Strawberry could do with it. The fastball up and in after the breaking balls were away. We just got a, a, a sure an incorrect speed on that last fastball. It said 107 miles an hour. The gun is broken. Three men on the right side of second, and sure enough, Strawberry unable to hit one through with the second baseman Blouser throwing him out. There is one away. Yeah, 107. That'd be an all-time record. Yeah, we major league history. We may have to uh, get another opinion on that. One. Yeah. Well, I'm going to give you mine. It was incorrect. <laughs> One down here is Eric Davis. Davis has a herniated disc in his neck. And, uh, of course, the Dodgers are very worried about it. It's somewhat similar to the kind of a thing that had Hubie Brooks uh, down last year while he was with the Mets. And as you recall, Hubie Brooks had to have surgery. And he says that uh, the neck problems have caused pain in his right arm just caused him also to throw the ball erratically so he's been in some terrible pain one ball one strike to Eric Davis but he has been the Dodgers leading hitter he drives one down the left field line caught out there 
by Gant. Out number two. Well, he didn't hit that ball like he was in terrible pain. Well, it was an off-speed pitch. It was outside. It was an off-speed pitch out over the plate, and that's the reason that he was able to handle it. See, it's an off-speed pitch. Watch him. He can slow his bat down. There's see a little slider coming in to the middle of the plate, and he just kind of reaches for it and drives it. We'll have to check him out next time up because I guarantee you he will come inside and up with the fastball. We'll see how he handles that. Juan Samuel. Thought about a bunt there. Takes ball one. Juan Samuel, why would he think about a bunt? He is 0 for 18 lifetime against Steve Avery. It's time to bunt. I think he might be thinking about taking a day off tonight. Shallow center. And in the Sanders can't catch it. Samuel for second. Two. And we'll see how they score it. Well, he, he misjudged it a little bit because he started back. And then he came in, but he got to the ball. He just dropped it. But another thing to remember now, the sun is directly over the roof of the stadium, the edge of the stadium. And that may have bothered him. You see Samuel shading his eyes right there. See, here comes Dion. His glasses fell off. That may have caused him some problems, too. And it just hits off the heel of his glove. But look, see, his glasses are down. He had tried to put them down to block the sun, and they fell all the way down around his neck. And it caused him a problem. And Samuel into second. They'll score that as an error against Sanders. Here's Sosha now. And a base hit could tie this game with Samuel, who's a very fast runner, in scoring position. So an error against uh, Deion Sanders. First error for him. Here's Mike Sosha off to a slow start. So Juan Samuel is in scoring position, but he is still a hitless in his career against Steve Avery. And it's a ball. Now last night, two different Braves tested the arm on tag-up plays of Brett Butler, and both were out at the plate. And of course, it's so worrisome for a manager when anybody tries to tangle with Mike Sosha at the plate yes. because he puts men on the disabled list. And Mark Lemke's out of action as a result of tangling with Sosha on one of those plays at the plate. Green to Avery, and that ends the inning. One error, one left. Top of the order coming. Sanders, Blouser, and Pendleton. When we come back. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball is brought to you by Cold Filtered Miller Genuine Draft and Miller Genuine Draft Light, taking the country by storm. And by Polaroid. Nothing works like Polaroid instant photography. The view of downtown Los Angeles from the, our blimp. And uh, here we go. Sunday Night Baseball from uh, Dodger Stadium. Chavez Ravine, Los Angeles. Leadoff man Deion Sanders to start it off against Tom Candiani. And there is ball one. Sanders was a strikeout victim leading off the game. So this has not started out to be the kind of a game that Sanders has been having almost every night with a strikeout and an error already for him. In the previous 12 games leading off the game for the Braves, he had gotten a hit eight times. Well, what you're seeing now, John, is the National League pitchers trying to adjust to Deion Sanders. Two second. Samuel. Sanders is out number one. Number four, Jeff. Well, he showed you the shot from the Goodyear blimp. Sporting new colors and a new name, the Airship Eagle from Carson, California. He's been providing these aerial photos over Dodger Stadium. Tonight's pilot is Charles Russell from Downey, California. We're glad to have them. And there's ball one to Jeff Blauser. Had a comeback for his first time. Blauser has been slumping. It's only two for his last 20. It's a ball and a strike. John, it's interesting and, and probably fate that Tom Candiotti is a Dodger finally. You know, he grew up here in the area loving the Dodgers. In fact, he told me the story that he, when Tommy Davis broke his ankle, him and his mother, Doris, who was also a big Dodger fan, wrote Tommy Davis a letter. He sent him back a picture thanking him for their concern. And he's kind of been a Dodger fan ever since. He said he was also a Sandy Koufax fan. He sent away a milk carton top once and got a picture of Sandy Koufax. 
and he says his mother, who lives in Concord, California, has both of those pictures still framed and hanging on the wall. <laughs> two and two, the count to Jeff Blauser. Former Dodger fan, current Dodger right-hander. Candiotti strikes out Blauser. Second strikeout for Tom Candiotti. We'll take a look at his knuckleball. Number nine, Harry. Now watch it how he releases it. Now we'll take a look at it. That is actually a slider. That is not a knuckleball there. That was a slider. And Terry Pendleton has a base hit. He fouled out his first time at first ball swinging, has himself a single this time. Pendleton badly Number five. in need of one, too. He had only eight hits and yeah. 47 at bats this year until this base hit. Two down, Pendleton aboard. One to nothing. Atlanta is leading, and the batter will be Ron Gant. When I talked to Bobby Cox before the ball game, I asked him, did he do anything differently this spring than last spring? You know, because no National League West team has repeated as a division winner since the 78, 77, 78 Dodgers. And he said he didn't do anything differently this spring than before, except he did talk to him about it. He said, hey, I mentioned it. We have to work a little harder now that we're champions. He said it's tougher to win the first one than he thinks it is to win two in a row. Well, we'll see what he says come October. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cincinnati Reds are going to give a good run. Those Dodgers certainly have designs. There's a ball. One ball, one strike again. And how about the San Francisco Giants? Who moved into first place today with an 8-2 to two win over Pinellas Dodgers. They clobbered Tim Belcher up at Candlestick today. And also, how about the Houston Astros? Art House Ball Club shut out San Diego in 11 innings. One to nothing in the Astrodome. They're tied for first with the Giants. That's a called strike two. One and two to Gantt. Well, Ron Gantt seems to be thoroughly confused because Candiotti has thrown him a slider, a slow curve, and a knuckleball. He had a base hit in the first inning off a knuckleball that didn't move, so Candiotti has mixed his pitches up very well on him this particular bat. This one should be a knuckleball. We get another look at it. They called the balk. I beg your pardon. Well, it was both, John. They got him, but it was a balk to do it. <laughs> <laughs> they got him at first, but he did balk to do it, I guess, according to the first base umpire anyway. Paul Rungi says he balked. Candiotti doesn't understand why. Let's take a look at it. Somewhere in that motion, there was a balk. One ball and two strikes to count again. Now a base hit made a run. Two and two out again. Again, 32 homers and 105 RBIs last year, and 34 steals. 32 homers, 84 RBIs the year before. And 33 steals. And already this year, Gantt with three homers and three steals. Popped it up. Offerman out from shortstop. And the side is retired. One hit, one left. Offerman will lead it off when we return. There's the big crowd at Dodger Stadium on this Easter Sunday, 1992. Atlanta won the Dodgers nothing. Steve Avery trying to be the stopper for the Atlanta Braves who've been beaten here the last two nights by the Dodgers. Jose Offerman, the Dodgers shortstop, leads it off. And it is strike one. The much maligned Jose Offerman, at least by the newspaper people. His teammates are really standing behind him and they think he's going to be a good player. It's almost like coming up for periods of time the last couple of years, Joe has worked against him because yes. he was very erratic to say the least, a field, and the Dodger Stadium crowd starts this year thinking the worst of him. Right. Well, it was an interesting comment by Fred Flair, the general manager. Uh, they were, you know, getting all over Jose Offerman. He said to blame 
Jose Offerman and put all the problems the Dodgers had so far this season on his shoulders is unfair. He said, I'm going to help him carry that weight because it's not fair to him. And also he said that he's going to be a good player one of these days and he's going to be the Dodgers shortstop for the next 10 years. There's Fred Flair right in the center of the screen. Dodger general manager. Two and two to Offerman and the ball is a foul off to the right. Tom Lasorda, Dodger manager. We were carrying a game during the spring at Port St. Lucie the day that the Dodgers announced that Tommy had signed the contract extension through next year. Two and two the count to Offerman. Candy Adiante. Sharp breaking ball from Avery. Misses three and two. One to nothing. Atlanta. Last to the third. We have some interesting statistics here to look at. Sometimes foul. in the ball game. You think about, you know, they talk about Offerman. The Dodgers have had a couple of fine shortstops here. A few actually. Pee Wee Reese, of course, Maury Wills, and Bill Russell. And Pee Wee Reese, his first full year in the major leagues, had 47 errors. And that's a base hit in the center field. For Offerman. So they've had all those great shortstops and none of them could have done better than that. No, and I mean he's doing well with the bat. You know, he's hitting 256 at the beginning of the ball game. Actually, this is some of the things they were upset with, you know, Al Rosen, I guess the Giants general manager. There were some quotes in the paper here today that some of the Dodgers didn't like and you know, these are some of the quotes you can read it. They lost power when they lost Eddie Murray. Their pitching won't be as strong without Belcher. Mike Sosha has lost something with age and they said, have you seen that in field? <laughs> Meaning, I guess, the fact that Offerman's at shortstop, Sam Wells at second, and Cal Daniels, I guess, at first. Well, and to be fair, Rosen isn't the only one saying that. A lot of scouts, a lot of baseball people have been saying the same things about that Dodger infield. But I don't, the Dodgers don't like it because they hate the Giants. <laughs> but, but not many baseball people went on record. I mean, a lot of them said it anonymously. But Al Rosen is kind of surprising, right? I mean, what does he have to gain by saying that in public? Well, the Dodgers and the Giants are not best of friends, I don't believe. <laughs> One strike to count. Candiotti punts the ball, but foul, and it is two strikes. Candiotti one for six with an RBI. Al Rosen talking about Lasorti. Uh, Lasorti saying he's going to gulp every time a ball is hit to the infield, <laughs> despite what Tommy says. <laughs> well, Offerman has made four errors already. And one in particular helped cost them a game in San Diego a few days ago. Uh, they went to San Diego and got clobbered. They lost a whole series to San Diego, and they were coasting along when he booted a double play ball and ended up costing them a couple of runs and eventually the game. One and two to Candiani. But as you said, they lost a couple of other games there too. Yeah. And I think that's what Fred Flair is saying. He is being blamed for the entire. You know, series in San Diego. But you think that you, in your assessment that Offerman is going to end up being a pretty good player out there? I think. Bluffing the butt. Let's see if they can turn two. Caliar will come back to first. Double play. Two down and nobody on with Butler coming up. Number 22. Well, Tommy was a little right. upset before because they didn't get the bunt down, so he tries to hit and run. It's a breaking ball. Hit back to Avery. He makes a perfect throw. The second base. He leads Belliard coming across the bag. He makes the turn. And he gets a little pressure from Offerman. But he's able to make the throw to first base to complete the double play. Here's Brett Butler. Lead off man. Flying to shallow left center his first time. Well, the Dodgers, as you see the infield alignment against Butler again, with Pendleton very shallow at third. Curve ball for a strike. On what? The Dodgers are not well liked right. around the National League anyway. And we saw that perhaps never as well the last couple of weeks of last year when it seemed like the whole National League was rooting against the Dodgers <laughs> and for the Braves. Yes. A lot of that I think had to do with the Braves being the underdog too. And the Braves have had not won a pennant in a while. The Dodgers had. Uh, but there is a mystique about the Dodgers. You know that this is Hollywood. This is Tinseltown. And people, you know, most people around baseball fans are really you know your everyday working fans so they can't identify as much with all the glitter as with the Dodgers that a lot of people here can. But Joe isn't there something about I mean when you played you didn't like the Dodgers. Yeah but I didn't like them for a different reason that was because we were always fighting them for the pennant. The shortstop Belliard throws out Butler. 
It's the Braves one, the Dodgers nothing after three. Tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, it'll be the Phillies and the Cubs, and uh, John Cruck started the day leading the National League and hitting Ryan Sandberg, one of the greats of the game. That'll be tomorrow night. Chris Berman and Tommy Hutt will be there to bring it to you on ESPN Monday Night Baseball, 8 o'clock tomorrow. Don't miss it. Here is Sid Bream. Walked his first time. Bream won for his last 19. And, of course, just the whole season has been a slump for Bream. He's... Uh, three for 29 this year. He's not a regular right now. He's struggling in a platoon roll, but he hits this one a mile, and he'll get two bases automatically. It bounced over the wall out there. Well, he's red hot now. The only time a knuckleball pitcher gets in trouble is when it doesn't knuckle. You see that ball's right in the middle of the plate, and it doesn't move. Now, one thing that happens when you hit a ball with no spin on it, it really takes off, and that's what happens with that pitch there, and it flies over Brett Butler's head in left center field. Now Damon Berryhill, switch hitter, batting left-handed. He singled home the only run of the game back in the second inning. He's got a chance to do it again here. Bobby Cox can let him swing, though. He's had success. The one at bat against Candiani, he's swinging away. It's a strike on one. One run at five hits for Atlanta with one error. No runs, one hit for the Dodgers. Top of the fourth inning. Ball and a strike now to Barry Hill. We mentioned that Tommy Hutton will be covering that ball game with Chris Berman tomorrow night. Tommy's dad used to work in those uh, box seats right behind home plate, these special dugout level boxes that are unique to Dodger Stadium. And uh, his father, George Hutton, passed away this winter. And Dodger Stadium is just a little bit of a less friendly place without George Hutton. We miss him down there always with a happy smile and we talked to some of the folks down there in the dugout level boxes behind the plate and they too had nothing but the kindest words and somebody even brought a card in in remembrance of George Hutton. I used to speak to him all the time when I was a player and come, would come here to Dodger Stadium. Very nice gentleman. One down, Bream at second. Here is Steve Lyons. Lyons grounded into a double play his first time. I mean, he hit a shot, and Juan Samuel turned it into a double play. Ooh. Is that a curveball? That looked like a knuckleball. He was way out in front of it. Owen won the count. One to nothing. So Barry Hill unable to get Bream over to third base. Bream still at second after his double. One nothing Atlanta. strike. John, I want to give those numbers I was talking about. Pee Wee Reese, who is in the Hall of Fame, his first year he made 47 errors. His first full year. Maury Wills, another great player here for the Dodgers, the shortstop. His first year he made 40 errors. So you're saying the Dodger fans should keep that in mind when they yeah. assess the performance of Offerman this yes, year. Yes, because he can only get better. And with their support and also his teammates' support, I think he'll be around for a long time. One ball, two strikes to Lions. One out, runner at second. Fourth inning, one to nothing. The Braves lead the Dodgers from Dodger Stadium. In the dirt, Lions will head to first. Sosha checks the runner. Bream at second before throwing over there for the put out. Two men gone here in the fourth inning, and Rafael Belliard comes up. Next Sunday night will be indoors, about as far geographically away from this ballpark as you could possibly get. And, and still be in the major league. And probably as much a different ballpark as it is distance wise. We'll be in a different country, a High different tech. time zone, and uh, in a way, a different century. Yeah. We'll be in the Sky Dome, the Toronto Blue Jays. Spark Anderson told me yesterday he thinks the Blue Jays, without question, are the best team in all of baseball. And uh, we'll see the Blue Jays and the Kansas City Royals next Sunday night, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific. And we'll be with you, of course, every Sunday all through the baseball season at 8 o'clock Eastern on the ESPN Sunday night baseball game of the week. Sometimes Sparky does state the obvious, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, and he's not the only one saying that about the Blue Jays. No, I agree with him. 
And it is one ball and one strike to Rafael Belliard. Had an infield hit his first time. Belliard, Belliard hit 375 in the World Series last year. Which kind of surprised a few people. He's not hanging around for his bat. Dodgers are having a big conference on the mound now. It's like a board meeting out there. Most of the infield joins at the mound. Only Mike Sharpison, the third baseman, did not go to the mound there. Why wouldn't they invite Sharperson out there, Joe, when everybody else is going out there? Do they hold it? No, I think in the National him? League, there's a rule. You can't have that many people there. It's not like the American League. American League, everybody can come oh, in. Oh, that's the opposite. The American League, that you, only a couple guys can Well, go. I think the National League shouldn't let everybody in. We're going we're gonna to make sure they don't. Well, they didn't let Sharperson in. I feel bad for him. Carroll's. And that is the inning. Billiard pops out. One hit, one left. Sharperson, Carroll's, and Strawberry coming up. John Miller and Joe Morgan back with you from Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. The Braves won the Dodgers nothing as we go to the last of the fourth inning. The number two hitter Mike Sharperson will lead it off against Steve Avery and then Eric Carros and Daryl Strawberry. Eric Davis will be due up fourth in the inning. Slider is low to Sharperson. He grounded a third his first time. Sharperson and Harris. The two go together here in Los Angeles. And a base hit for Sharperson. Only the second hit for Los Angeles against uh, Avery. Sharperson and Harris the last couple of years have ended up platooning at third base Number primarily. The combination of the two makes an excellent hole over third base. They keep looking for a regular to replace the two of them and the two of them end up still getting most of the advance over there. Here is Carroll's. The right handed hitter flying out to right field his first time. Daryl Strawberry is on deck. Foul back. And they let Eddie Murray go off to the Mets, although they offered Murray one year, reportedly. But he wanted two, and he got two from the Mets. And it was thought that the job would belong to Carroll's, but he was not given the job. Daniels been hurting get some knee problems right now he got run over last night by Deion Sanders in a play at first base Carroll said 22 homers with 101 RBIs at Albuquerque last year 316 average 352 average in San Antonio the year before 18 homers and that's a base hit and the table is set for the power here comes Strawberry and Davis right behind him Eric Carroll's in the lineup to add another powerful bat in there. And a right-handed bat is that. Right-handed because the Dodgers have shown over the last year and a half that they are very vulnerable to left-handed pitching. And that's basically because of Daniels and Strawberry being their power. Daryl Strawberry, only one hit in 15 lifetime at bats against Avery. Ball one with a breaking ball. Avery started him off with a breaking ball on the outside corner for a strike. The last at bat and then another one on the outside corner and then he went back inside. So this tells me he misses with the fastball away. I mean breaking ball away. He's going to have to go inside with a fastball or back away with the curveball. And the fastball in. And it's a base hit past the diving. Blouser being held at third is Sharperson. He had to hold up just to make sure that ball was not caught before the bounce. Getting a, getting a late break. Yeah, I think the bases are loaded. That was a late break, John. I mean, you're saying he didn't have to. No, wait, he didn't he did. have to. <laughs> you, you called it correctly, but it was a late break. Bases loaded is Strawberry. Well, he tries to come inside with a fastball on Strawberry. He jams him, but Strawberry is so strong that he's able to muscle the ball through the infield. See, there was no chance for Blouser to catch that ball in the air. You see, Joy Amalfitano was waving all the way, but Sharperson just got a slow start from second base. Base is loaded as Daryl Strawberry gets the single against the tough left-hander. Only the second hit he's ever gotten. And there's the Atlanta pitching coach, Leo Mazzone. They call him Rockin' Leo, Joe. They say in tight games, Rockin' Leo sits over there and he's starting, he starts fidgeting on the bench, but he always does it in rhythm. Let's take a look at that pitch. 
It's going to be inside, a fastball on the inside part of the plate. And Strawberry gets jammed. It's a good pitch by Avery. See, it's on the inside part. But Strawberry muscles it into the outfield. And Davis takes ball one. Now, Eric got an off-speed delivery and lined it to left field where it was caught by Gant. Base is loaded. Atlanta's infield double play depth at shortstop and second base. They pulled in at third and first. Although Pendleton backs up a little bit third now. And it is 2 and 0. Oh. Now, Avery, the image you have of him in the postseason last year in those huge games against Pittsburgh primarily, but also against Minnesota, was a poise. Nothing seemed to rattle him. Well, he, he had the control to make the perfect pitch when he needed it. 2 and 0 oh, the count. 3 and 0. Oh. He does not seem to have that control early in the season. And that's one of the reasons that he has struggled so far this season. And also keep in mind, Eric Davis is hitting 600 against left-handed pitching this year. Not this particular lefty, though. And he has walked in a run. Sharperson scores. Davis takes a walk, gets credit for a run battered in. The game is tied, and now the Dodgers have got to be thinking big inning. Well, you've, you've got Juan Samuel coming up, and Samuel is a guy that can bust the game open, but he's also a guy that strikes out a lot, and he hits into double play. So Avery has a chance to, you know, get out of this inning if he can strike Samuel out. And there is bullpen activity now for Atlanta. Base is still loaded, nobody out. Samuel safe on the Sanders error his first time. And the curveball misses. Ball one. Remember, though, Samuel is 0 for 19 lifetime against Avery. But if you fall behind Samuel and have to give him a pitch to hit, he can really hurt you because he has a lot of pop. Ooh, blew that one right by him. One ball, one strike. In the Atlanta bullpen, Left-hander Kent Merker has started to warm up. Meanwhile, the Dodgers with Caro, Strawberry, and Davis on the bases here with nobody out. Atlanta looking for the double play ball. Here's the pitch. Curveball. Strike, and it is one and two. Look, a nice one off there. Well, that's what he was able to do last year when he would fall behind an account and be able to make a good pitch to get himself out of trouble. But his control has not been as good this year. And thus, he struggles when he gets behind in the count. One and two to Samuel. That will come back into the seats off to the right. The base runners there is Eric Carros at third base. Darryl Strawberry at second base. And Eric Davis is over at first base. Davis running real well this year, by the way. Got three stolen bases. Been much healthier this year early, but now he got that the neck problem. Again, the one-two offer. That will go out of play. He's fighting off a couple of tough pitches here from Avery. Actually, this looks like a, a new Juan Samuel in that with two strikes now, he's cut down on his swing and he's trying to make contact. In the past, Samuel was a free swinger from his first strike to his last strike. But now he seems to be just trying to put the ball in play when he's behind in the count with two strikes here against Avery. Up the middle. And through base hit, the first hit ever for Samuel against Avery. Carroll has scored, so has Strawberry. Davis stopping at second. 3-1 Los Angeles. Very rarely in the past would Samuel get a hit when you got ahead of him in the count, two strikes. You could get him to chase pitches, and he would swing at a lot of bad pitches. Here, he has cut down on his swing, and watch, he just guides this ball right back through the middle. Look at that. That's kind of almost a half swing, and he just guides it right back through the middle. It's a fastball. It's over the outside edge. It's actually a very good pitch by Avery, but all Samuel did was hit it back through the box. Good piece of hitting by Juan Samuel. Now here is Mike Sosha. Remember, they have three runs into the Dodgers and two men on, and still nobody out. It's already the beginning. The runners are going. And he's safe. A double steal led by Eric Davis. Samuel taking second. 
That was a very interesting play because you normally do not steal third base with a left-handed hitter up because the catcher has a clear shot at it. But what they did there is Sosha swung. It was a hit and run, but also they caught Pendleton in between. He was playing in for the bunt and could not get back to third base when the throw got there. So he catches the ball and he is not at the bag. He just kind of sweeps backwards. And Davis slides in safely. She never even made a tag. Right. At least from what we could see. But he got caught in close here looking for the bunt. Now Pendleton has gone in to say a word to Avery. Goes back to third now. The infield comes in. The count one strike to Socia. Runners at second and third. Three runs already in. The outfield bunched up toward left field. Yant shallow and left. The curveball is in the dirt. Knocked down by Berryhill. One ball and one strike. There is Davis with his fourth steal of the year and four tries at third base. And Juan Samuel with his first steal of the year over at second base. Avery in his first start nine days ago against the Giants went only four and a third innings. Gave up three runs and seven hits and walked four. more activity than Merker the left-hander has been joined by Rivera the right-hander out there Ben Rivera one of the things I see here John is that since he's gotten in trouble Avery is actually reaching back getting a little more on his fastball that was a real good fastball on the outside corner there her ball foul Hard grounder just passed the bag at first one ball and two strikes to Socia. I think that's what you remember from the postseason last year Whenever he would get in trouble, he could throw the breaking ball for a strike, or he could reach back and get just a little extra on his fastball. One and two to Socia. Into left field. Gant is going to have to go back. Still going back. Makes the catch. Davis tags up. He'll score easily. Samuel went halfway. He returns to second. And it is four to one, Dodgers. Ron Gant shows you that he's going to catch this ball all the way. And I believe that Samuel should have tagged up at second base. He has excellent speed. See, Gant's going back all the way. Right now, he tells you he's going to catch it. If Samuel is tagging up, there's no way Gant can stop, bring his momentum back, and throw him out at third base. One away. Here's Offerman, the pitcher on deck. Wide of third. Pendleton gets to it. Both Samuel at second and throws out Offerman. Offerman singled his first time, but he's a one pitch out this time. Two down in the fourth inning. Four runs in for the Dodgers, and the battle will be Tom Candiotti. So a big inning here against Avery. Candiotti, after failing to bunt, his first time grounded into a double play. Along the right field line, Lions in foul ground for the catch. Eight men bat, four of them score, one stranded. Four to one, Dodgers over the Braves after four. The moment was April 10, 1947. Jackie Robinson joined the Brooklyn Dodgers, thus breaking once and for all baseball's tragic color line. That same year, Robinson had a league-leading 29 stolen bases, 125 runs scored, and was the league's rookie of the year. By 49, he was the most valuable player in the league. In 62, Jackie Robinson, one of the best players ever to play this game, was inducted into baseball's Hall of Fame. Jackie had a little bit of Jose Canseco in him there. He hit that ball, kind of looked at it, started his home run trot right away. <laughs> he knew it was gone. Dodger Stadium and the big crowd here on the uh, holiday. Steve Avery bluffs the bunt, takes a strike from Candiotti. Avery and the Braves are trailing four to one. Avery, the most valuable player in the National League Championship Series last year. He set a record with those 16 and a third scoreless innings. That's 
to drive into center field. Butler's going back, still going back, and he won't catch up to it. All the way to the 395 foot marker. Juan Nelly. And it's a double for Steve Avery. Well, he's not been getting it done with the pitching, a four run inning in the fourth inning against him. So he's helping himself another way. Well, the knuckleball is high. And again, when you hit the knuckleball, it will go. See, it's high and it just kind of tumbles. Avery waits on it. And Butler can only chase it down at the wall. I tell you, Avery's now two for six this year, and his two hits have been a triple and this double. And uh, Deion Sanders, who has taken his lumps against the knuckleballer tonight, he has struck out and grounded out the second. And the Braves need to start chipping into this lead now. We're in the fifth inning. Four to one, the Dodgers ahead. A strike. The Braves missed an opportunity back in the fifth inning, Joe, or rather the fourth inning when Green led off with a double, and he never got any uh, further than second base. I was saying earlier, you see the National League pitchers adjusting to Deion Sanders now. They're throwing a lot of off-speed pitches. The first two last night, Hershey was starting him off with a changeup, first pitch of the ball game. Today, Candiotti threw him a slow curveball. And now you see them starting him off with a lot of off-speed pitches, not giving him a first ball fastball to hit. And that will change Dion's thinking. They'll throw him a lot of change-ups and curveballs and then throw the fastball in as he did last time. Where it gets around quickly. Well, they can read the paper. The guy hitting 440, we better change what we've been doing to him before. One ball, two strikes. Dion with six triples. Three doubles and a home run in the first ten, uh, first twelve games of the year. You have to remember these pitchers watch ESPN late night. They see him running out these triples, and they see they're all off of fastballs. Two and two, the count to him. Nobody out. Runner at second. Clouser on deck. Sanders last season with the Atlanta Falcons tied for the NFL leader in interceptions with six. All-Pro cornerback. The NFC. He has been leaving the Braves. He did last year, July the 31st, to go to training camp with the Falcons. But will he this year? He's under contract to do so, but the first time there's some talk that maybe he's thinking of full-time baseball career. I, I noticed in one of the papers here recently, his agent sort of downplayed that notion, although Sanders himself had made some comments that made it sound like he was uh, Thank you very seriously, preferring to become a full time baseball player. Well, I think his agent is thinking from the financial and economic yeah. point of view. That's not Dion's thinking with his heart a little bit. That's exactly what his agent said, Joe. He <laughs> says he's excited, and what he's saying is from his heart and not his head. <laughs> Three and two the count. Well, Bobby Cox is a big. Deion Sanders believer he thinks that Deion could be a gold gloved outfielder he could become one of the great leadoff men in the game if he gave it his full attention he drives this one deep into center Butler though is there tagging at second Avery and he takes third now let's go to Chris Berman Hi, right, John Budweiser takes you to Fenway Park when the Blue Jays thought they had the Red Sox beaten but the Sox have tied it at four and the youngster, Scott Cooper, joint off the rubber. Alomar's got to get the force out of the winning run scores. Not quite. The Red Sox, big ninth inning, win it 5-4. Back to L.A. Thanks, Chris. And we'll be watching Chris Berman and Tommy Hutt tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern, with Monday Night Baseball. Here is Blouser. The infield stays back, except for Sharperson at third. That'll get the run home. Offerman from deep short. Throws out Blouser as Avery scores. The Braves manufacture a run here. RBI for Blouser. It is four to two Dodgers. And Terry Pendleton comes up. Well, they did here in this fifth inning with that leadoff double. What they didn't do with it in the fourth inning. They stranded Bream out there after he doubled. The Braves have six hits against Candiotti already. It's only the fifth inning. They've had some chances to do more. After they had a run in the second, they also had two men on and nobody out, but didn't get anybody uh, else home. Ball one to Pendleton. He's fouled out and single. The Braves did not hit all that well 
to start the year anyway. That's a strike on ball one strike. By the way, Gary Thorne is going to pinch hit for Chris Berman tomorrow night on Monday Night Baseball. We give him a big plug, and now he, <laughs> he stands us up. Oh, the ball and about 14 pieces of the bat head out to second base. Samuel fielded the right object and throws out Pendleton. The run is in, though, 4-2. to two. Top of the order coming for Los Angeles. As they called strike to Brett Butler, the Dodgers come to bat in the last of the fifth inning. The Dodgers four and the Atlanta Braves two. Butler has been kept off the bases by Avery so far. The curve is too high. One ball, one strike. Butler has flied to shallow left center and grounded a short. Pendleton, as always, plays him very shallow over third base. Bream pulled in at first base. Foul tip. One ball, two strikes. Butler. Sort of the, I mean, he's not Ricky Henderson, but he is a Ricky Henderson a, without the speed. He's a mere mortal. He's a, he's a model leadoff man. Yeah, because what he does is he makes the pitcher work like Ricky Henderson does. He gets on base very well like Ricky Henderson does. He'll steal a few bases, not as good as Ricky. Uh, doesn't have as much power as Ricky, but he does make the pitcher work. So Butler's retired. He's 0 for 3. Ordinarily, that's one of the keys to success against the Dodgers. Keep Butler off the bases. Right. Well, Avery has, but he's given up four runs anyway. Didn't keep this fellow off the bases in the fourth inning. Mike Sharperson. Sharperson single leading off the inning. That started that four-run Dodger rally. He's 1 for 2. On deck, Eric Keros. Strawberry would be due up fourth in the inning. Somebody gets aboard. We'll see. Uh, Darrell. On on the count. a ball and a strike. Now, Joe, after the great success by Avery last year and the, the burst of fame in October, I mean, are there any dangers for him to try and avoid this year coming back now, not as a as a young rookie that nobody knows, but as suddenly a, a celebrity? Well, definitely there is a little more pressure on him at the beginning of the season than there was last year at the beginning of the season. I mean, he, you expect him to do certain things. Now you expect him to shut the teams out every time he goes out there. And that does put a little pressure on him. And he probably expects it, which puts a little bit more pressure on himself than he would like. But, uh, I mean, success does cause a problem sometimes. That's why, you know, you talk about the sophomore jinx. You know, a lot of times a rookie will have a real good season. Next year, he thinks he has to do better, and he puts a little more pressure on himself than he should. The third, Pendleton. Throws him out, and that is the second out. Two down, the Dodgers. And under Tommy Lasorda, you wonder how good are they going to be this year? Well, last year, as you know, they were very vulnerable to left-handed pitching, especially down the stretch. That is the reason that they did not catch the Atlanta Braves. Uh, and, and they haven't really helped themselves from that standpoint yet because they traded, well, Eddie Murray left, They've added Eric Davis. You know, that's kind of a almost an even swap because, they're, you know, last year Davis was injured. They got a little bit more out of Eric uh, Murray last year than Davis gave the Reds. They need someone like Carroll to step forward from the right side, supply some power against these left-handed pitchers. And you were very kind because, I mean, really, they, they got a lot more out of Murray last year right. than the Reds got out of Davis, yeah. who had all the injury problems. But we'll just say that both of them being healthy, they would both be run producing players so that's an even you know swap we'll say so therefore they've got to make up for their lack of hitting against left handed pitching and they have to do that with some right handed bat and I think Karras is a guy that can probably do that he got an important hit that fueled that fourth inning rally a single he is one for two in the game three and one the count up into the twilight does anybody have it no Lions the right fielder, Blouser the second baseman, and Breen the first baseman all were there. They were all there, and yet nobody was there. No one was sure enough to make the call. Kind of landed right in between them, no man's land down the right field line. 
your second baseman blauser was way over towards second base so he had a long way to go and now you see lions takes a look at brain no one is calling as you can see now there are lions looks at brain and it's too late three and two brain to avery and that ends the inning one two three It'll be Ron Gant to start it off for the Braves when we go to the sixth inning. The Dodgers four to two. Four to two. Dodgers over the Braves. We go to the sixth inning at Dodger Stadium. This is John Miller along with Joe Morgan, your ESPN Sunday Night Baseball telecasters. Ron Gant has singled, stolen a base, and scored a run, and he has also popped a short. Strike to the outside. Yeah, it didn't seem like the call. <laughs> no. Well, it's a little tough on the umpire, too. Those knuckleballs and sliders moving all over the place. It's not, from, you know, he's, it takes them a while to look at Candiotti, too, to know exactly how much this ball is moving and where it's going to end up. Because a lot of times you have to really call the ball when it crosses the plate, not when the catcher catches it. Right, yeah. We count down one and two. You know, just three years ago, he was demoted all the way from the big leagues to Class A ball. After he uh, almost won the Rookie of the Year award. Well, the reason why they said he had, you know, attitude problems, and they had moved him from second base. He came up, he was a second baseman. Then they moved him to third base, and he had a lot of problems. They sent him to the minor leagues where they taught him to play the outfield. They moved him to the outfield, and since he's been back, that's the position he has played, and he's done very well. He keeps a, a little inscription under the bill of his cap, not the helmet, but his cap. I guess a, a bit of a pep talk. It says, I will, I can. I am. Okay. A little positive. <laughs> okay. Feedback, I guess. Two and two, the count again. I will, I can, I am. In the last two years, I understand. He has, he has again, and so far this year, <laughs> he is again. I understand. I will get a hit. I can get a hit. I don't understand. I am. I am. I am good. Okay. Good. Or in his case, as a 30-30 man, I am great, maybe. Oh, good point. I am a 30-30 man. Let's yeah. use that. And uh, in pretty good company. Yes. Too many 30-30 guys around. And actually, only two other people have done it back-to-back. -back. And these names are great Wait names. Let me guess. I know. You You probably guess. Well, I know I know Willie Mays. All right. And you know, every time we talk about 30-anything, Bobby Bonds comes up. Bobby Bonds has done a lot of things that people do not give him credit for. Bobby Bonds and Willie Mays, the only two players in the history of Major League Baseball to hit 30 home runs and steal over 30 bases in consecutive seasons. Until Ron Until Gant Ron became Gant the third did. one, yeah. Mays did it in 56 and 57. Bobby Bonds did it in 77 and 78. I broadcast his games and he did it in 78. Did that uh, in Texas that year. Strike three. Boy, strikeout for Candiotti. Candiotti was feeding Gant a variety of slow pitches, but in the back of his mind, he always knew that he would throw him a fastball. That is a breaking ball, slider on the outside corner. You have to be aware that Candiotti, again, is a pitcher that throws a knuckleball. He's not a knuckleball pitcher, meaning he doesn't throw it 90% of the time or anything like that. He will mix his pitch as well as he's doing right now. Here's Sid Bream. A walk and a double for Bream, and he takes a strike going on. And see, that's a curveball. That is not a knuckleball. The average speed of all of Candiotti's pitches today has been 65 miles an hour. <laughs> 65, Joe. Yeah, but he's been more successful than the 85 mile an hour. That 85 is really just about good hitting speed. You know, you want to be, you know, you think of hard throwers, you think up around 88 and over 90. And you think about soft throwers, and you thought, think in the 60s and the 65. So he is beating them with the off speed pitches, so to speak. But he's mixing in the fastball just enough. Has a drive deep down the right field line, but hooking foul. Not even that deep, but he comes down to it. Two balls, two strikes. That was an off speed pitch, and he had Bream out in front. The Dodgers, Dodger Blue. Dodgers Stadium. It opened 30 years ago. The Cincinnati Reds were here for a game in April of 62. I think the baseball world was kind of astounded by this ballpark when it opened. What a what a palace of yes. baseball. 
Strike three. Candiotti making them look bad here. He is in complete control because he has good control right now. Everything he throws is working right now. He's used the breaking ball. He used the fastball. And that is a knuckleball. Good pitch. Take a look at this, a knuckleball. And Bream just chases it as it goes down. There's a fastball. To Damon Berryhill for a strike on one. Berryhill has singled home a run and he has flied out to left. Two down, nobody on. The Dodgers lead the Braves four to two, and that one in the dirt, and he swung at it. 0 oh, and two the count. Well, you see he's changing speeds well, fastball, and then comes back with a knuckleball, which is an off-speed pitch for him. Bobby Nobody Cox. <laughs> he's making the batters uh, look bad, and he's driving the manager crazy. One and two. Ways pitch with a fastball. I asked him how he was adjusting to the National League hitters. And he said the first game he pitched this year, there were four American leaguers in the lineup. Which is probably no coincidence. Well, he pitched against uh, the San Diego Padres, and they had Sheffield, McGriff, Fernandez, and Stilwell. So four of the eight hitters, he had faced them before. Two and two the count. Two down, nobody on. That's a foul on deck. Lions, he would be next. There is bullpen activity for Atlanta as we play the top of the sixth. Four to two, the Dodgers lead the Braves. And it is three and two now to Berry Hill. There's Juan Berenguer in the Atlanta bullpen. Hard throwing better in right hander. He was the Atlanta stopper last year until he was injured, and then Alejandro Pena came over and kind of completed the job that he had started. Struck him out. And Candiotti strikes out the side. Strawberry and Davis to start when we come back. John Miller and Joe Morgan back at Dodger Stadium. And Daryl Strawberry ready to lead it off for the Dodgers, followed by Eric Davis and then Juan Samuel. Well, Daryl Strawberry and everyone's looking up here because we had Joe Lasorda, Tommy's lovely wife, up here talking to me, and he's taking the time to wave at her. And so is Tommy out of the dugout. Strawberry has grounded a second, and he is single. Scored a run. High fly ball to center. Sanders started back. Now comes in a little bit. And just like that, on one pitch, there is one away. Last of the six, the Dodgers lead four to two. Well, each and every time I come here, Tommy brings me some spaghetti sauce. He says it's dietary, and Joe was delivering it. And there's Tommy down in the dugout. Sends you spaghetti sauce, he sends me slim fast. <laughs> That's ball one. Davis is lined to left, and then in the fourth inning, with the bases loaded, he drew a walk to drive in the first Dodger run in that four-run rally against Avery. It's a high, high pop fly. Rafael Belliard saying, Yolo Tengo. <laughs> and indeed, he does. Two no, men gone in the sixth inning. Eric Davis, the ball is really jumping off of his bat, which is a lot different than last year. So I expect if he can stay healthy, he will have a good season because he's swinging the bat very well right about now. Fat ball's really jumping off his bat. Well, watch him. He drops the bat, and it's going to be a fastball in, and he still gets to it. See, he's there. He just misses it. Here's Juan Samuel, one of the heroes of this one so far. Takes a strike. In the fourth inning, he got his first ever hit after going 0 for 19 against Avery, and it was a two-run bases-loaded single to break the 1-1 tie. Also, he reached on a drop fly ball, an error against Deion Sanders back in the second inning. One ball, one strike, two down, nobody on, and the last of the sixth, the Dodgers lead the Braves 4-2. to two. Two 
two and one the count. You know we had noted earlier in the broadcast that Lasorda had signed a new two year contract with the Dodgers and we I wanted to ask Joe how long they wanted to stay here. And that's a ball three and one and we'll have to ask her that when we get a chance. And there's Tommy. That's a shot down the left field line that's going to be extra bases. Gant has to chase it. Samuel to second and he'll hold there with a stand up double. I was talking to Juan before the ball game today and he was saying that he was starting to swing the bat better. Everything was coming together. He had a good night last night and he's swinging the bat very well again today. We get a look at Avery. He tries to throw a fastball on the outside corner and down and Samuel good swing pulls it down into the corner. We get a good look at it here. Actually the ball's on the inside part of the plate but it's down. And he pulls it into the corner for a double. Good piece of hitting. Well Juan Samuel and a lifetime of futility against Avery. Now Avery can't get him out. Here's Socius. First ball swinging on the curve. He bounces it to Blouser, who throws him out. One hit, one left for the Dodgers. It'll be Lions, Belliard, and then the pitcher spot due up when we go to the seventh. It is four to two, Los Angeles. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball is brought to you by Anheuser-Busch, who proudly brings you family talk. Let's stop underage drinking before it starts. And by Sprint. For worldwide voice data and video communications, discover Sprint, not just another phone company. There's the aerial view of Dodger Stadium from the Goodyear blimp, and it is 4-2, the Dodgers leading the Braves. We go to the top of the seventh inning. Time running out of the Braves here to get back into it against... Tom Candiotti, but Candiotti turned it up a notch there in the sixth inning. Struck or out the side. In his case, he sort of <laughs> slowed it down slowed it three down. notches. Yeah. Uh, he was throwing pitches that were in the 50s on the radar gun. Steve Lyons is hit into a double play and struck out. He has one strike. Belliard after him, and then Avery do up third, except looks like we won't even see Belliard. Lonnie Smith has already come out into the on deck circle, so. Bobby Cox is going to start making some moves right here. And he has Baron Gare up in the bullpen. Each team with six hits. The Dodgers lead the game four to two. Daryl Strawberry. And Lyons is out number one. John, you were talking about slowing it down. Here's a curveball to Gant for the first strikeout. This is a knuckleball to Sid Bream for the second strikeout. And the third strikeout to Damon Berryhill is a slider or curveball on the inside corner. All three pitches, very slow. So now Lonnie Smith will come up against Candiotti. And you wonder about Lonnie's future with this ball club. The way Deion Sanders is playing. And especially when Otis Nixon gets back. And Nixon is due back by the end of this coming week, and then Dave Justice is eligible to come off the disabled list a couple of days after that. And that leaves them with at least one outfielder too many. Now they they can make some minor league moves with uh, some other people, but Bobby Cox will have some hard decisions along with his GM. John Shore holds to make. There's uh, Willard on deck. He'll bat for Avery. One out in the seventh inning. Lonnie Smith. All of a sudden, uh, Socia can't find that knuckleball. Two and two the count. Maybe it's getting better here. <laughs> Lonnie Smith, 0 for 9 this year. He's, he hasn't been able to find much playing time even with Nixon gone. Strawberry. Out number two. Two men gone in the inning. And uh, we are at Dodger Stadium. I'm John Miller along with Joe Angel. Joe, uh, Joe Morgan, <laughs> and, my Sunday night partner. And, and who's Joe, this beautiful lady? Joe Lasorda is with us. She delivered my spaghetti sauce. But I was wanting to ask you that question. Lasorda signed a new contract. How long do you want to stay here? You know, we've been a Dodger for so long, I can't imagine going anywhere else. But 
It remains to be seen. <laughs> but L.A. is our home. Two down, nobody on. Here's Willard. And ball one. He's pinch hitting for Avery. Spaghetti sauce is pretty good, is it? Excellent. You've got to try it. No, he, he only gives that to he Joe Morgan. You can't try it well, in your make mind. sure you get some. <laughs> okay. Along with the slim bass, whatever you want. <laughs> Two balls a count to Willard. You know, a lot of people, you know Tommy very well. I've got to know him the last three or four years since I retired. Didn't know him when I played for the Reds. Didn't want to know him. We remember you, yeah. though. <laughs> but he is, he is really enthused over baseball. I think that's the thing that I would like to convey to most people. You know, a lot of people say, well, that's just hype. That's just whatever. But you live with him. I know that it's the truth. Yeah. He is really the happiest and loves the game more than anyone I have ever seen. And Dodger Blue, of course. That's it. And I just saw you guys on ESPN about Dodger Blue <laughs> before I left home today. Well, he, the one thing about it, he's, when he took over, he wouldn't let the Dodger players wear red <laughs> any place on the plane. I remember uh, when I had to throw away a red raincoat. <laughs> <laughs> two balls, two strikes to Willard. Two down, nobody out of the seventh inning. And a full count. Deion Sanders on deck. What happened to the crowd tonight? There's nobody here. It's Easter. <laughs> They're only eating. There must be only 40,000 something here. <laughs> I'm shocked. What a perfect day, though, huh? What a day. 3 2 pitch. Strike three called on the inside corner. Thanks for stopping by, Joe, and I really appreciate the spaghetti sauce. You'll get some next time. Joe Lasorda with Joe Morgan on Joe's manager's wife's corner. <laughs> we'll be back. Thank you. About 15 changes for the Atlanta Braves defensively as we come back for the last of the seventh inning. And not the least of those changes is Juan Berenguer on the pitch in relief of Steve Avery. Hard throwing veteran right hander. He'll face Jose Offerman to start things off. Candiotti do up second. And then Brett Butler seeing Berenguer's numbers for the year. And Offerman, who is a switch hitter, takes ball one. As a right handed batter against Avery, he had a single and a ground out to third. One for two for Jose Offerman. Down the first base line the diving green. Extra bases. Two, maybe three. Sanders now in right field. Picks it up. Heading for third. Offerman on his way. Standing with a triple. You know, for a kid that's been maligned as much as he has, he was in a very good frame of mind before the ball game. We talked for a few minutes. And he has a lot of confidence in himself as he rips this ball past Sid Bream. We'll take a look at Bream. He, he makes a very good attempt at it, dives, and it just gets past him. It just hit too hard. And there you see Offerman heading around the bases. I don't know if it's my imagination or what. A lot of triples here in Dodger Stadium so far this year. Now here's Candy out of the infield is in, way in. To shortstop, or rather, toward shortstop. Pendleton cut across, and he throws out Candiotti. Now, numerous changes for the Braves all around the field. Pendleton staying at third base, and DeBream staying at first, but just about everybody else has been changed. Lonnie Smith stays in the game to play left field. Gant has moved from left to center. Sanders from center to right. Lyons from right to second, and Blouser from second to short. And we're not repeating that, so I hope you memorized it. <laughs> That's an interesting move. You move Sanders from center field to right and put Gant in center. I mean, if you like Gant better in center, why, why not why put Dion in left That's in the first place? <laughs> yeah. I guess. Well, he likes Dion in right, but he doesn't like him in left. He likes oh, okay. Gant in left, but although he, he likes Gant in center. <laughs> Who's on first? So apparently right? he likes Gant better in center than Sanders, but he likes Gant better than Sanders in left. And... Uh, a very poor bit of base running there by Offerman. Staying in the rundown, though. Look out, guys. They almost blew the rundown, did the Braves. Not textbook fashion there. And that they didn't teach it that way in the Branch Rickey School of Dodger Baseball. Butler. Actually, they had Offerman going on contact, so I really don't think it's his fault here. Watch. He's going right away. See? 
and the ball happens to be hit back to the pitcher. The only place they would have had him is if it's hit back to the pitcher, and it was. But that's the way it goes. And he does stand the run down long enough to get Brett Butler into scoring position at second base. And as you mentioned, he almost got by Blouser before he made the tag. One to five to two to six. Here's Lenny Harris, a left-handed hitter, batting for Mike Sharperson. I understand that they had that play, Joe, the contact play. Right. But I don't understand the point of it in that spot when you got a ball right back to the pitcher. Well, I think all right, the, the problem is that you don't know, you know, from the angle you're looking at, at third base, you can't tell if it's back to the pitcher, past the pitcher, or to second base or hit to the right side. I know it's, it may sound dumb because we can see it very plainly on the screen, but looking from third base, it's a lot tougher angle. And you're going on contact. Your contact point is the ball hitting the dirt in front of the plate. So, in other words, what you're saying is they couldn't devise the play real successfully and say, go on contact unless it's back to the pitcher. Yes, they could, but only with your exceptional base runners or someone else can do that. I mean, that's more of an instinctive play. You say go on contact, most people go on contact. That's what it means. But, of course, you know, your better base runners are saying to themselves, go on contact except back to the pitcher. <laughs> now, if you've been at third base, would you have been running on that play? I'd like to hope I would not, but I have been caught in that situation before myself. All right. That's, See, what you're that's doing, the litmus test on that one. All right, what you're doing is you're looking for the ball contact with the bat, right? Now, you want the bat to hit the top of the ball, and then you're going. Now, the ball strikes, you know, you hit the dirt in front of the plate, and you just take off. Lenny Harris, the count of three balls and no strikes, hitting 290 for the year. And it is three and one from Bear Gear. By the way, Steve Avery, now three starts, and he won't, of course, be able to get a win in this one. Could get a loss. It's four to two Dodgers. Avery went six innings, gave up four runs, six hits. But the intriguing thing to me, no strikeouts for Avery. He never struck out a man. Three and one the count. That's a foul down the left field line. And back in amongst the spectators. Three and two. Now, John, look, we're looking from a similar angle that we would be looking at, you know, from third base. We're looking for first base. See, you couldn't tell till it's too late. He did stop, but it was too late. And you have to give Baron Garrett, uh, you know, a pat on the back because he did it the right way. He ran him back toward third, but they should have gotten him a little sooner than that. And they would have been able to keep the runner from going to second base. So but if, if Barry Hill had held on to that ball another second, he would have been too late to get right. it back to Blouser, and there was nobody else behind at third base there. If he'd gotten past Blouser, he would have gotten back to the bank safely. Three and two the count. Check swing. And nobody gets it. I don't know that it would have made any difference if they had fielded it. I don't, I'm not sure either, but the the reason that Blouser could not make the play was because of Pendleton. You see Pendleton pat him on the back as he goes by because Pendleton, you know, sh shields him from the ball. He loses sight of the ball when Pendleton runs in front of him and sticks his glove out. Check swing by Lenny Harris. Now he gets out of the box good, but see right there, he loses sight of the ball because all of a sudden he thinks Pendleton's going to make the play and then he gets past Pendleton and he has to catch it. And they score it as a base hit. Well, I, I think so. I, I agree. No, Harris no, I runs agree. pretty well. No, I agree with you. It was a tough play for the shortstop. Yeah. Here is Benzinger. Todd Benzinger, veteran, pinch hitting for Eric Karros. Benzinger is a switch hitter batting left-handed. Hitting 273. First ball swinging. Long run for Smith. He got there. And just like that, the inning is over. Two hits, no runs. We go to the eight. Top of the order coming for Atlanta. Chip Eagle from Carson, California. It's been providing these aerial pictures of tonight's game from high overhead Dodger Stadium, framed against a cerulean blue sky. And there's what Tommy Lasorda calls <laughs> blue heaven on earth, Dodger Stadium. <laughs> and of course, there's Vin Scully, the voice of the Dodgers, the great Hall of Fame broadcaster, maybe the, the best there ever was. Here is Deion Sanders, and he takes the ball outside from Tom Candiotti. And let's go back to John Miller and Joe Morgan, the best baseball broadcasters in America in their price range. <laughs> 
Deion Sanders, he's been uh, held without a hit tonight. Hit the ball well his last time up against Candiotti. Deep fly ball to center. Well, Candiotti has really mix, mixed his speeds well on Sanders. Two off speed pitches to every fastball. And that's what he's been doing. He's throwing two off speed pitches here and one fastball. And then the fastball is only fastball in name, really. Right. Well, he's spotting it well. He gets it inside every time he throws him the fastball. It's fast merely by comparison to his other pitches. Two and two the count. I mean, his fastball, how fast is it? Well, it looks a lot faster <laughs> after you see a 60 mile an hour changeup or a 65 mile an hour curveball. Two and two to Sanders, trying to get something started with the Braves. Four to two Dodgers toward the middle. And Samuel cannot handle it. Well, that was a base. And he's anyway. going to try for two. And he makes it easily. And he, he was also going to make it to first base easily. Wow. A little bounding ball and it's a double. Yeah, well it was it was a tough play for Samuel, and if he would have come up with it, he still would not have been able to get Sanders. And there's Sanders going to first base. Well, he turns and goes into second base. They'll score that as a double for Deion Sanders. Off the edge of the glove, and again, even if he would have caught it, no chance to get Sanders at first. And a bunt. So she goes right to first to get Blouser. I don't think they'll give a sacrifice on that one. Then he's got to be bunting for a hit down by two in the eighth inning. It wasn't a bad play, though, John. I think it was a good play to try to drop it down the third baseline. Lenny Harris stays in the game to play third base after he pinch hit for Mike Sharperson. Todd Benzinger, likewise, stays in to play first base after he pinch hit for Carroll's. They are going to score it as a sacrifice for Jeff Blouser. Here is Pendleton. So you think that was a you think it was a good play to bunt? I think it was a good play, yeah. I mean to try to, you know, get on base. I think, you know, to drop the ball down the third baseline, not back to the pitcher or whatever, but if he could beat out a bunt single, it was a tying run. Now you see Pendleton right up in the front of the batter's box, and he fouls one away. Pendleton has fouled to first. He has singled and he has grounded a second. It's four to two the Dodgers in the eighth inning. The Dodger bullpen is very busy right now. Just in case, Candiotti. Begins to stumble here. The right hander is Roger McDowell. The left hander is John Candelaria. It's Deion Sanders at third base. One out. And it's a one ball, one strike count to Pendleton, the National League MVP a year ago. Rarely has a veteran player gone from such a poor season to such a great season. I mean, this is a guy with a track record. We know, or we, we thought we knew what he could do. Well, he had 230 as last year in St. Louis, and then 319 to leave the Latin National League in hitting last year. I mean, his lifetime average, even with the 319 factored in, is 267. Well, it was 259 before last year, so he raised it seven points. I mean, eight points. Is that right? Yeah, I, I went to school. 259 to 67, so he raised it eight points. Him up. Samuel, out number two. See, that's one of the things that the Braves did well last year. In this situation here, he would have at least hit a ground ball or did something to get the runner home. Now it's four to three going into the ninth. Instead, he pops up, and that's what that's one of the reasons teams do not repeat because they do not do the same things the, the next year that they did the year before. And if you look at a lot of the Braves players last year, they had, you know, what people consider career years. Of course, last year was his best year ever, and so were several other people. I think Ron Gant is the only one that may have not have reached his peak yet. Now, Gant bluffing the bunt, and I don't get that because he's the possible tying run, and he's their biggest home run threat, one of the biggest in the league. Yeah, I don't agree with Gant doing it. Was he bluffing? No, I don't think he was bluffing there. If it would have been in the strike zone, I think he would have dropped it down. I agree with you. He is their home run threat. He has to go for the gusto. That's what they need from him. They need the long ball here. And they strike. One ball, one strike. Right after the game, Sports Center. Stay tuned. All of the day's baseball and basketball highlights. The NBA playoff picture has now been finalized. Right after the game.
Not quite. The Lakers have to win tonight to make the playoff. Houston lost today. I think that's the last one left. Well, they'll have it. They'll have it on Sports Center. Yeah. They have everything on Sports Center. If they don't have it on the one right after the game, they'll have it on the next one. There's a shot to left field, but playable for Davis. And that is the inning. One hit, one left. The Braves will only have one more shot at the Dodgers. Strawberry, Davis, and Samuel. Four to two, the Dodgers lead the Braves after seven and a half. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball is brought to you by Bud Dry. Dry brewed so it drinks light, yet satisfies completely. By the new Sperry Top Cider, now with considerably more cushioning. And by ESPN Home Video, producers and distributors of Slow Pitch Softball. Available at video and retail stores nationwide. John Miller and Joe Morgan, here's the scene outside Dodger Stadium, but all the action is inside. Daryl Strawberry leads it off. Dodgers four, the Braves two. Juan Berenguer facing the straw man. Then Eric Davis and then Juan Samuel. And this is the middle of the Dodgers order, and they have produced some offense tonight. Strawberry with a single and a run scored. Davis a bases loaded walk. Samuel a bases loaded two run single. He produced some runs out of that middle spot of the order tonight. A ball and a strike to Strawberry. Well, Strawberry is actually. I mean, he is swinging the bat okay. I mean, he's not swinging the bat poorly. He has just not hit a hot streak yet. And with his long swing, he has to have everything going for him. And it is one and two the count. When you watch Strawberry, he has a long swing. Therefore, you know, he'll lose his rhythm sometimes, and it doesn't work. One, two pitch. Two and two. Swung at it. Strike three. A hard slider down and in from Baron Gare, and Strawberry goes down on strikes. Good now, slider down and in. Ron Gant was up there looking for that home run, and when it left the bat in the top of the inning, I'm sure Atlanta was hoping. Well, his hips break down on the swing, and that's the problem. He hits it all with nothing but his upper body, just arms, and he thought he got enough of it. May have gone out in Atlanta but not here in Dodger Stadium. Shoot. And his teammates thought he got it at first, but again, this is a bigger ballpark than Atlanta. The ball doesn't carry well here at night. Here is Eric Davis. He's lined to left, had a bases loaded walk, and popped a short. And the count is 2-0. Last of the eighth inning, 4-2. The Dodgers off to one of their worst starts since they've been in Los Angeles this year, but for the win tonight, they will have won three in a row and taken this four-game series three out of four from the National League champion Braves. So things getting better in a hurry for the Dodgers here. A lot of things happen to you on the way to trying to repeat. Back to Baron Gare. Two men gone. Don't forget, next Sunday night, we'll be in Toronto. Sunday night baseball, eh? The Blue Jays and the Kansas City Royals. The Royals got rained out today. They had a victory celebration after the game. Wally Joyner, the new member of the Royals, and Ro Roberto Alomar in the Red Hot Blue Jays. Many think the Blue Jays may be the best team in baseball. We'll get a close-up look at them next Sunday night, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific. We'll give them our Sunday night treatment. Find out just what gives with the Jays. There's a strike to Juan Samuel. Samuel has fly to the center. Ball was dropped by Sanders for an error. He's hit a two-run single, probably the key hit of the game, and he has doubled. This is the guy they, they never seem to want, Joe, when the season ends. Well, they do not want to sign him to a long-term contract, but they know that they have value in Samuel, and he is a good player. He adds a lot to their ball club. He adds speed, especially, and he can hit the long ball. Got the big hit last night to break a tie in the eighth inning. In the right field. Dion Dion. 
And that's the inning. Last chance for the Braves. Bream, Barry Hill, and Lyons do up. Four to two Dodgers. Stay tuned right after the game. Sports Center in a special conversation with Robert Parrish. I wanted to hurt him. He does things on the court that's not clean, what I call clean basketball. He does things, you know, it undercuts people and throws them to the floor, cheap shots people. I don't think that's part of basketball. You'll have that old conversation with Robert Parrish, the chief, one of the one of the best there ever was in the NBA. And his career just keeps going on and on and on. Well, he was a Golden State Warrior, which is my team, but uh, we traded him away years ago for a first round draft choice and he went over to Boston helped him win a lot of championships. Traded him away. Was that your idea? No, I, I told him not to. Sid Brain the hitter. Tom Candiotti looking for the complete game, the CG. He has the Dodgers only complete game so far this year. The bullpen is ready, however. If needed, Barry Hill do up next. A new left fielder has come in for the Dodgers, a defensive change. Uh, Mitch Webster is in left field. Here's uh, Mitch. Four to two. The Dodgers ahead. Four runs, eight hits for the Dodgers with four left. Two runs, seven hits, and one error for Atlanta with five left. One away. Candiotti, the more they face him, the worse they get against him. That's seven strikeouts for him, including five in the last two and a third innings. These aerial pictures today you've been uh, viewing and enjoying from Dodger Stadium. Courtesy of uh, Goodyear Tires, newly painted and renamed Airship Eagle. And there's there's a fellow. How'd you, how'd you like to put your life <laughs> in his hands? <laughs> Captain Charles Russell, who also doubles as the Easter Bunny. So kids, next Easter, the morning go out, look in the sky if you're looking for the Easter Bunny. See a blimp, you know he's been there. Barry Hill with one strike. Yeah, an interesting right thing in the National League West this year, the two best pitchers so far are both American leaguers. Billy Swift of the Giants is 3-0, and and now Tom Candiotti has a chance to go 3-0, and and both have come over from the American League. And both have hurt the Braves. Candiotti pitched a great game in Atlanta for the Giants the night that his uh, wife was expecting their child in Seattle, and he was trying to... Uh, I'm talking about Billy Swift here. He had one eye on the clock and one eye on his catcher as he shut out the Braves. That's fair ball and an unassisted put out. Two men gone. Candiotti making it look easy. Well, it, could you ever envision a pitcher who is as far removed in style from Koufax and Drysdale and even Hershiser for that matter than Tom Candiotti? And yet here he is about to go three and zero. Oh. You know, you showed a, a picture of Ben Scully, and I, when I think about coming to Dodger Stadium, I think about Maury Wills, I think about all the great Dodgers of the past. And then I think about the clubhouse guy who was the most famous of all the clubhouse guys in the National League during the years I played, Jim Muey, who played, you know, was here with the Dodgers all those years. He was back with Jackie Robinson. He was here, he's been here 100 years probably, and he just retired, so I want to wish him well. And, I just think about the Dodger tradition, and we talked about that earlier. There's a lot of tradition here in Los Angeles. And right now, a lot of wins for the Dodgers this weekend over the Braves. They're about to make it three in a row. Two strikes to count to Steve Lyons. Two down in the ninth inning. And 37,000 plus, and uh, those who are still here begin to rise to their feet. Candiotti has only thrown 117 pitches in tonight's ball game, And none of them very hard. <laughs> And it is one and two to Lions. Lonnie Smith on deck. He would be next. Well, he actually tried to blow him away with that one, John. He threw the fastball. Uh, upper 70s, I think we got that one in the radar gun. One and two, Candiotti. Now time taken by Lions. Candiotti has won as many as 16 games of the season in the past, but he's never really been with a good ball club. One two pitch. To shortstop Offerman. Fields it cleanly. The Dodgers have won it. The Dodgers take the series three out of four. The, fir the first real uplifting series they've had this season. Well, the Dodgers are still searching for an identity, and that identity is, are they going to be able to have a good defensive infield? That's going to be their number one concern. How is their pitching going to stack up? You know, they lost a couple of starting pitchers over the winter, and they have to replace